I want to again remind something very practical and very simple and covers everything actually. What could that be? Some time ago I used the example that if one fisherman goes to the sea with a, a line and a hook, he may catch one fish, one fish at a time. Another one goes out in a small boat and catch maybe 20 or 30 fishes. Another one goes into like a trawler and catch thousands of fishes. But I said, who is that one fisherman who with one hook can capture the whole ocean? And of course, the man goes, ah, yes, this sounds like a nice story. But what I mean by that, <clears throat> who is that one and how, with one acute understanding, can conquer can conquer this ocean of Maya. How how is it? Like a big claim. But what I said is that it was in response to someone, and I said, if you continue whatever it is that the mind manifests inside, whether in the form of a problem or attachment, because many people here also, even after years, have some either unconscious stuck some old hurt even or something that's stuck inside no matter how much you hear you're not moving stuck in them even in my saying like that some light comes to it but even if it's not that and if it's just something coming up the mind storm comes again some kind of conflict come they are always going to be personal Mean that they are here to affect the person you um, often identify as a personal self. You have a psychic identity with you. Always, oh, this one is happening to me, and so on. And what I said to you is this: that whatever it is, rather than trying to control your situation, which means, of course, you're identified with it, or even to ignore it. It still means you're identified with it, trying to do something. But let it happen and know that uh, without the awareness, nothing can manifest good or bad, high or low, inner or outer. Consciousness must be there first. Take the standpoint of consciousness. If that feels too abstract for you, then see that uh, the, the place of I within you is the weakness of anything that appears within your mind, whether it is something beautiful or not beautiful. You are the witness, when I say the witness of it. Witnessing of anything that is troubling you, or pleasing, or whatever it is, that is relating to yourself as a person, or even as not even a person. But it is showing up, what I call, in the theatre of consciousness. Meaning that whatever you perceive, you are outside of it. You are the witness of it, the witnessing of that. Don't identify with any, even with a sense of person, then becomes something witnessable. And what do you have to do in the, in the position of witnessing? What is it that you have to do? I say simply don't be confused with what is happening around you. How not to be confused? By recognizing that it's just a phenomenon and it is watched inside this detached, impersonal, witnessing space, which doesn't have a relationship with it, actually. The one who has a relationship with it is something very personal, a very personal mode. And just keep staying with that. Just stay with that. Don't go into, into fight mode. Just observe. Know that it is an experience, that it is sufficient to not identify. I mean, don't get involved in that. Just keep observing. And some things may feel very, very loud in that moment of the fiercest seeming attack on you. But as you stay like this, gradually the, the, you'll see that the thing that was throbbing start to ease away. Like it's, it's not catching, it's not sticking. Because you've removed the magnet. The magnet is the personal identi identity. And it will feel like the whole scene drifts away from you more and more. Okay? And is replaced by a very profound sense of being. 
that is untroubled by any phenomenon. It happens. It's not something you create. It's that you allow, and you start to feel like the, the sense of presence return to you, rather than goes out into the projection of personhood and its world. That's what I ask you to do. Anybody, you do it. Sit by yourself. This is not something that's going to go on for years and years. No. Every time you have the opportunity to sit. Step aside and just rest with it. Or something you may have heard me say, stay with it and recognize this is her, this direction is given, but somehow the place of witnessing is impersonal and is not on a journey. The witness is not on a journey to somewhere. Don't tell yourself that just in words. Recognize that. Get used to that stillness, that unchanging place. And gradually it just pervades the, the, the consciousness. So that even when you are seemingly unconscious about what's happening, the prevailing background is the presence. It comes like this more and more. You see, if you follow this already, the fruit is so powerful. And whatever you hear me say is feeding that presence. What's feeding the presence? Absorbing it into the, the God reality. Absorbing. And need not be afraid of that. Sometimes from the mind and the person feel, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I've got things I want to do. You have your favorite projections and desires that you want to live out. Then that's your freedom. You do. I can only tell you there's nothing greater than abiding in your own awareness. It's not a personal sense. When I say that you are God, I don't mean... It's not a personal statement. Not the person is God. No. But that what you are, in essence, is, is the oneness. If you don't see God merely as an entity, if you see God as an entity, it creates through the mind, is some person, something... It also manifests that. Of course, it manifests that. It manifests you. It manifests the Lord of the universe in some form. Okay. But that's a manifestation. So pure and all pervading is the supreme reality, the Lord of the universe. As I said, that even. Every atom obey his will and flows in accordance with the harmony he creates. I say he, but he's not he, he's not she, he's not it. Don't try to figure that out in your mind. Just follow the little advice I give you, and it will take you here. If I can even say take you, reveal the truth.